Good morning, good morning. Well, good afternoon, right? It's not morning. It is actually afternoon. It's your girl, Crystal Flowers. And yes, I am outside today. Um, guys, it is beautiful weather in North Carolina. I don't know how it is where you are, but I am super excited about this Grateful Tuesday. I know the time is a little bit later than what we normally get started, but guys, that's because I have a special guest coming all the way across... <laughs> um the the west coast yeah the west coast um hi charles great to have you on today and she is coming on very shortly guys. I just hey. Clicked her on. hey can you see me yes oh, i can you. see you, yes, yes, you. Yes. Ah, absolutely beautiful thank how are you this morning i'm doing great i'm doing great i am so happy to be here thank you thank you thank oh, you awesome <laughs> awesome so guys, this morning, like I said, it's beautiful here in North Carolina to hear us. So I decided to come out on the deck and, and do the live because it's so nice out here today. I think we're going to get almost up to 80 degrees today. Wow. Then we'll be cold again at the end of the week. But I wanted to take advantage of that. And I hope you don't mind. Um, no. Hi, I wish I was yeah. outside. It's, it's beautiful <laughs> here in Arizona, but it's kind of noisy. So I'm... I, I guess I'm in the right place, but it's, it's noisy. I right. Beautiful. Right. I love outdoors. Yes, yes. So, um, guys, this morning I am talking with the beautiful, as you can see, that beautiful smile, the beautiful, <laughs> she is an acclaimed author. She is a domestic um violent survivor she is also an entrepreneur entrepreneur and she is a part of a group called the healers guys absolutely amazing we are part of the same company but that's not what we're going to be talking about today guys we are going to be talking about miss tahara and her absolutely amazing story and how she was able to push through right um she has a phenomenal story guys um she like i said she's an acclaimed author right that tells you a lot right right there just in that nugget alone but guys i just love her spirit i enjoy being able to communicate with her just from the quick conversation that we had the last couple of weeks i mean the past week i was like oh my god this woman is phenomenal all right we just came out of international women's history month and i know um we we ran into some phenomenal women guys but we have so many women that are not spoken about right in the big picture, you see the ones on the stage, you see the glams, but guys, we have so many people within our community that are actually making such a great impact. And I have one of those people right here in front of me, right? Um, so uh, Tahira, I am so happy you are able to get on today with me and you were able to join. Like I was telling the audience, we had to adjust the time, but for good information, it didn't even matter, right? Because <laughs> guys, what are you gonna get? What you're gonna get today is gonna be so valuable so um to hear if you want to you could just go ahead and share a little bit um about yourself or introduce yourself i've done a little bit but <laughs> okay thank you so much first of all i want to give it back to you Chris. so I, I love your spirit and i thank you so much for having me on your platform to tell my story um i thank you for having this platform where people can share their stories in the community because just like you said so many women so many great women are unknown because they don't have a voice or they don't have any word to showcase what they have done so i want to give it up to you and i'm so grateful for you i thank you for this platform and uh, i thank you for what you're doing for women locally and also nationally so um uh -huh. like crystal said my name is tahira ogletree and i am an author award-winning author of the book surviving celebrating life beyond domestic violence and I wrote this book in 2000, and I started writing it in 2014. I have never written a book before, <laughs> okay? But I, writ I wrote the book because of a vision and a passion that I had to want to share my story and want to help others break their silence. So I wrote a coffee table book okay and when i first wrote it people were like well what are you going to do with a coffee table book and why is it a coffee table book well a coffee table book is uh it's a conversational piece right right and domestic violence needs to be talked about mm -hmm. right there are so right. many homes so many lives so many 
generations upon generations that get the mm -hmm. same old thing because things are not talked about. Right, things right. Are not exposed. <laughs> and I, I, I am blessed. I am grateful to have written this book. Like I said, I wrote it and uh, self-published it in 2016. I self-published it in six I'm sorry, six months later after that, it won first place award for mind, body, and spirit. So it doesn't wow. have only my story in it. It has stories of survivors all around the world, both men and women, and what um, what domestic violence does on children and how it plays a part. So I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, grew up, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Moved here to, uh, uh, to Phoenix, Arizona. I start my acting career that's what okay. I do. it's not it's right but when i had an opportunity to move when i was working in corporate there was an opera there was an acquisition that took place and i had an opportunity to move so i says you know what it was three choices i had new york and i said that's too busy um california is too high so I said, my hometown let me let me, let me move to phoenix and, you know, I did start my acting career, but it segued into me self-publishing uh, a, a book and also writing and producing my own two short films. So I'm glad I had that, but now my focus is on my platform and it is raising awareness on domestic violence. And I have joined this beautiful company to call Total Life Changes. And I have partnered with so many people, including Crystal Flowers, and uh, we have, um, it's a beautiful company, and what I've been able to do with Total Life Changes is combine uh, the company with my company, Detox Us Now, which is a health and wellness company here in Arizona, to help individuals that are suffering with domestic violence, or have suffered from domestic violence, and that are now suffering with chronic illnesses, to help them be able to get their life back and to help them be able to be healthy, healthier again. So that's just a little bit about my background. I'm going to turn it over to you. So whatever questions yes. you ask me, I am open. I'm open. <laughs> so I'm going to, yeah, I'm glad you segued into that, the, um, the illnesses that actual domestic violence um, survivors actually deal with. Because when, when we were talking, I didn't know that a lot of um, illnesses that domestic domestic violence survivors actually get later on in life from yeah. having from having had the physical abuse and there are some things there's some things I got this bee out here trying to get me um, <laughs> there's some things that um, you know like when you were talking about with the um, IBS like dealing yeah. with um, bowel syn bowel syndrome and that's from the tension caused by um, having the stress of the of the relationship can you just talk a little bit about some of those things that actual survivors actually deal with later on in life because yeah. I'm pretty sure like myself a lot of people may not know about the results from having that type of trauma yes absolutely so I want to um, just go into a description of not only domestic violence, but any emotional trauma. So mm. physical trauma of death over a period of time, over a lifetime of death, of a loved one, divorce, natural disaster, you know, a car accident, any physical trauma, it will bind your intestines up and go through so much trauma that you there that you're experiencing that it will contribute to adult irritable bowel syndrome so when yeah. you have an abusive relationship everything in your body is tensed you are traumatized from the emotion from the physical from the from, from all aspects of abuse and mm -hmm. What I went through was physical, emotional, uh, financial, verbal. So I, I went, I dealt with all realms of abuse. And just in five years, just in five years, I was married five years. And just within that time of that relationship, my body suffered. And I didn't know when I was younger. I was fine. I was running. I was doing this. I was doing that. I was good. But as I grew older... I started having some illnesses and mm -hmm. I didn't know where they came from. I went to the doctor. I had taken multiple um, prescriptions over the counter and uh, 
uh, regular uh, not over the counter and prescription medications and nothing worked i was taking my four to five medications daily to just go to the bathroom wow so when i joined total life changes the iso detox tea was what helped me to mm -hmm. go and, and, I, and have, I have been going ever since i mean it absolutely mm -hmm. works but the thing is when the difficult the, the um the the when you go through abuse there are also other um chronic illnesses that happen to a person's body who's gone through that impact um so three to four million women a year report chronic illnesses and this is from the american medical association three to four women three to four million women a year report chronic. Mm -hmm. so some of those chronic illnesses are lower back pain headaches memory loss difficulty sleeping depression diabetes asthma anxiety digestive uh digestive issues heart disease weight gain stiff muscles uh, inflammatory uh, bowel disease mm -hmm. as chronic pain and bloating. So what I experienced was the IBS, the lower back pain, and the inflammation. And I didn't know where it was coming from. So in 2011, mm -hmm. I took a leave of absence and I had to take care of myself because I kept getting sick over and over again. Now, this is 20 years out. This mm -hmm. is 20 years out. Wow. And this happens that the three or four women who report this, they report the chronic illnesses five, 10, and 15 years later after the event. Right. So um, when, I report, when I had to take off of work in um, 2011, I went, back to, I went back home to Cleveland, Ohio to get injections in my back for the sciatica pain. They didn't know what it was. And mm. nothing, nothing could be treated. It was so bad to, you know, days I would walk. And, and when I was younger, I would run track. Mm -hmm. And I'm a runner. Right, right. I love running. And in my head now, it's just like, Tahira, you, you, you can't do that right now. You got to take <laughs> care of yourself. Please. We talked about that. Right, right. 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 You got to take care of yourself. You got to ease up a little right. bit. But mm -hmm. um, there are certain things that I just, I have to modify. But um, in 2011, I took a, a break from work and um, I went back and forth to the hospital to get injections. I was on mm -hmm. therapy, everything, the whole nine, line, not nine yards. And in 2012, I had an opportunity to retire early. So that was mm -hmm. a blessing. That was a blessing. Um, but at that point, I still dealt with those issues. They didn't get too bad to the point. They didn't get too bad up until 2020 where I got my okay. last infection and I was bedridden for 30 days. I couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. And a couple months later, I ran into the, the total life changes and they have truly helped me. Now I can, I can walk, run with no problem. However, right. I do too much. Yeah, right. you got to use wisdom. You got to use wisdom. Use wisdom. <laughs> exactly. 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 So those, are, those are the chronic illnesses that um, women deal with a year. And it's so bad because the doctors don't even know. They can't trace right. it. I went to the doctor multiple times and they never connected it to domestic violence. Right, right. They give you right. a prescription and they allow you to go and do this and do that. And you're just Not medicated. That's it. Right. Oh, Not oh, realizing. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes. And so I'm going to tap into another question because, you know, this platform is about gratitude. Yes. And I know a lot of times when people talk about gratitude, they say, oh, you got to fake it to make it. You actually don't. Um, but a lot of times with the abuser, and I don't know if this is true for your situation, but let me help me out a little bit. Sure. The abuser will make you feel grateful for the situation that they have put put you in so make so they make you feel as though you should be grateful for just basically i'm just for lack of a better word for being in their presence or oh you should be glad i'm here for you blah 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 blah, blah. did you experience any of that and how were you able to disassociate the negative response of that gratitude to the positive response of gratitude that you now carry? 
Does that question make sense? Yes. So let me answer the okay. first part. The first okay. part is that I, my ex-husband always made me feel that way. You know, mm. um, it's, it's the, it's the beat you up syndrome. And then let me give you this and you should, mm -hmm. be, let me give you this gift or let me say these sweet words to you. And you should be grateful that I'm still here mm. for you. Right. Because mm. this is something that, you know, you did. Right, right, did right. It. So therefore you, you had to be taken care of, you had to be punished. And Keep talking. Keep okay, talking. you had to be punished. So therefore, you know, I am, uh, uh, I'm here for you. I, 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 I decided to stay with you anyway. I might have to hold my phone and we ain't got to hold okay. up the phone. <laughs> That's okay. I decided to stay with you anyway. So uh, mm -hmm. those are head games. Right. And if you do not know who God is, wow, and who you are, mm -hmm. you will continue to perpetuate that day after day, year after year, year after year. Now, how I broke that is because I knew who God was. Mm. I grew up in the church. My mom grew up. I'm a Christian, you know. So I knew mm -hmm. I would pray. In spite right, of right. what my head was, where it was at in that particular time, I would say, God, help me. See, if you right. can't say or do anything else um, in the situation, you can ask God for help. Right, so right. Later, in my later years, to, I really began to understand and know and develop into who I was. But mm -hmm. what led me into that relationship was I always wanted to be married because mm. I grew up in a single family home. So therefore, that's what I looked for. And that's what I was born with. So I didn't right. have all the tools and the resources and the things that I knew, had needed. But one thing for sure, I had God. So Amen. That, that is what I leaned on and who I leaned on to take me out of that relationship. And then I began to grow and grow and grow and grow. To your second question, um, the gratitude. Am I, am I grateful for where I'm at now? Is that the, was that the question? How do you disassociate that? Have, were you able to disassociate that abuses grat, um, act of gratitude to make you feel like you should be grat grateful for that situation with knowing what gratitude really is about? You know, because sometimes, um, you know, after you've been through that situation, and I don't know because I haven't been through that situation, but I have a friend. And that gratitude, um, she said when the therapist started telling her, you should be grat grateful for you're, you're out of the situation. She couldn't relate to that word of gratitude because that was the same thing that that abuser had put her, had, had had her associate with. So her association with gratitude was um, abuse or right, right. Yes. So it had to, she had to get to a point where she had to come out of it. So that's what I was saying. How do, do were you able to disassociate yourself from that toxic gratitude? And I think you kind of answered that with the God, you know, with saying about God, but how were you able, were you able to associate yourself with that abuser's gratitude and knowing what gratitude was fully and really about that? I uh, guess. Yes, I was. And I was able to do that within the marriage that I was in okay. because I had an opportunity to work for a Fortune 500 company. And within that company, they showed me, they helped me see my worth. Right. They were able, I mean, I was doing work, I was being awarded for it. And I saw that this is not like what I'm going through. This is not what I'm hearing at home where I'm nothing and I can't do anything and I'm not mm -hmm. one of anybody. Over here, they're telling me this, and this is a company. This is right, 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 right. So, yes, right. I was able to differentiate the two and know that I was someone special. Uh, within right. that first year, I rose to the top of the company with the number Amen. one award that they had. Um, Amen. DNA. And, and, you know, God gave that was a gift from God that He gave right. to, me to allow me to 
to really see who he was and mm -hmm. who I was. And I stayed with that company. And that company brought me out here to Arizona. So wow. I, I learned so many things and grew so much within myself, within that company first. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was able to divorce in, with him was still being in that company. And then there were people there, friends that people got was supportive. into my life and spoke wisdom, and not wisdom, but spoke uh, positive affirmations to me and acknowledged me for who I was. So yes, I was able to differentiate the two. This one over here, you got a problem. Here, I'm walking <laughs> with God and he has got me on the right path. Right, right, right. So you said something very valuable there too. You had a network. Um, you had people that were supporting you. Yes. A lot of time, other um, domestic violent uh, survivors don't have, or people that are being abused don't have a support system. Would you be able to give them some words of encouragement on how they could um, tap into some resources within that situation? Yes. Um, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you may be in that situation, but being able to still be able to tap into some type of support system. Um, I know prayer is one, yes. but being able to tap into um, support. Right, right. That, mm -hmm. that can actually help them while they're going through that situation, getting through that situation. First of all, I want to just say that there are people in this world, all over, no matter what city, state, region, wherever you are, that is willing and able and want to help you, okay? They want to help you. There is hope, there is, there are so many resources out here, but the first thing that you have to do, you gotta let somebody know. Yes. Now, myself and other survivors, we are aware of the signs. So when I see somebody that may be acting a certain way or feeling, I can detect that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so sometimes I will go up and be as bold and say, are you okay? Are you, mm. you know, and, and, and really get in because I know that that can save a life and I know they're uncomfortable with exposing that but just letting them know that you are there for them right right if you are a uh, if you are if you know someone in your family if you know someone at work just let that person know that mm -hmm. you're here for them they're not going right. to want to talk up front they're not going to want to talk in the beginning but just right. let them know that you're there for them now, uh, there, the, but the most important thing is the person has to talk. That person has to say something. They don't have to give a whole full disclosure of their story, right. what's going on. Say the words, I need help. Right, right. And there are mm -hmm. different entities, even in the book that I've written, uh, there are resources in all 50 states. Yes. So whenever you need support, you can call. And get someone to speak with. Do not, do not, do not, do not act like it is okay because it is not. It is not okay to be abused, right. take any type of abuse, but speak up because there are a plethora of resources mm -hmm. here um, to help you. What? Um, I got another question. <laughs> Because I know somebody out there is taking this information and they're soaking it up. And guys, if you have a question while we're on, I'm pretty sure Tahara, um, you don't mind if they answer no, answer no, questions. No, okay. Um, I know somebody dropped something in here about a vitamin. We're going to get to that question in a minute as well. But um, what about things to do? Um, like I know for for my for myself when it comes to gratitude i practice gratitude right mm -hmm. it's not something that i wake up every day and i'm feeling la 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 every day mm -hmm. because that's not that's not true you know right. um, for the most part i control my own joy i control my own happiness mm -hmm. right um but there are some things that i do that to practice to be able to ensure that i carry that joy right yeah. one of them being is um a journal I journal, I write down the things that I'm grateful for. And so this is something that um, 
if you're out there and you're listening, this is something that you can do is writing down all of those things on a daily basis that you are truly grateful for. I also sometimes sit silent just to be able to think about, to think on the goodness. Yes. <laughs> for me, it's yes. thinking on the goodness of God, right? Yes. Uh, for me, thinking on that, being, being grateful for those things that I've, um, I've seen happen. But what are some of the things that when you were in that, if you can remember, because I know this has been a long time for you to hear, but when, when you reflect back some of the things that you did um, or some of the things that you even do now still to this day that you practice for um, a spirit of gratitude? Um, a spirit of gratitude back then, I would take prayer walks. And okay. I would take prayer walks. I would clear my mind. I would always talk to God. God is my friend. He is my right, friend. Right. I, I would always just talk to God and just, you know, be thankful because I knew someone else was in a worse position. I didn't know them, mm. I didn't see them, but I knew that they were in a worse position. So I would thank yes. God for not being in a worse position. That's what I did back then. So what I mm. do, um, I have a, my, my wonderful pastor, he has a, a saying, find something to be grateful for. Find yes. it, find it. And you know, you don't even have to find it. It's right yeah. in front of you. So what I fit yeah. with, what I actively practice now, so when I'm going through something or I had a bad day, I said, oh, I, mm -hmm. I pull back to here. Um, I'm grateful for my mother. I'm grateful for my health and strength. I'm grateful for yes. my I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful for the Holy Spirit. I'm grateful for where I stay. The lights. I'm grateful, the, for, my, right. I'm grateful <laughs> for my children. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to get, a, get in my car. I'm grateful to get up and brush my teeth. All Chief, things, right. I'm grateful for to sight. I'm grateful to hear. I'm, I'm grateful to, to smell. All these things that I just said, somebody in this world don't have. So right, I am right. grateful for these things. So after I get through go, going through that, I said, oh, well, you know what? That's not that bad what I was complaining about because you right. have, have gratitude and complaining at the same time. Exactly. So, you know, I, I, am, I have to, you know, discipline myself because like you said, we got bad days. We, yeah, have, we yeah. all have bad days. We got some yes. things that happen to us, and then we get in this mood. But we have yep. to actively get out of that to be grateful. Mm -hmm. He loves us to be grateful for what he has given to us. He does so yes. much for us. Yes. You know, yes. so much for us. We might not be yes. what we ought to be, but we know right. us, and we are not worse. Maybe some other people are right now, so we have to be right. grateful. That's what I do now. Back then, I walk. I still walk, and thank God, I um, I I don't journal, but I do love to write. So yeah, <laughs> um, right. When I, am, when I am in a a mindset of just really getting my expressions out, I I go and uh, write a, a poem or write a write a uh, a quote or something. I'll right. put it on Facebook or I'll put it somewhere where I can use it for later. So that's that's kind yes. of yes <laughs> absolutely you just closed it out for me because that usually at the end of this um grateful tuesday i usually tell people to actually reflect on at least two things that they are truly grateful for mm -hmm. because we all just like you said we have something whether it's lights water uh running water because in a lot of countries they don't have running water mm -hmm. it's something that you can be actually grateful for no matter what your situation or condition is so yeah. thank you for that girl you said a whole lot you was preaching up in here <laughs> <laughs> and I absolutely appreciate it. You're welcome. We are in this beautiful company called Total Life Changes. And one of the core values is grateful is our mindset. A mindset. And that is my favorite core value. Yes. That yes. is my favorite core value. Because a lot of times when you start to become grateful, you take your mind off of yourself, mm -hmm. right? You, you start to reflect. It, you start to be reminded of the things that you have. And mm -hmm. like you said, it puts you in a position where you reflect and you be like, okay, somebody does not have this small thing that I feel like is small, but mm -hmm. they may not have this thing. Someone else is wishing for the thing, the very thing that I may have. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely amazing. And, and, you know, another thing I um, also set, always suggest too is volunteering, right? Volunteering is very important. That's another thing that will have you reflect and see what you have to be grateful for when you start to look at someone else's condition or their situation. 
right? When you go out and you volunteer and you help somebody else, this big old bee keep trying to come over here. But, <laughs> but it will have you go out and reflect and see those different things. But I'm telling you, this plat this information i know i have not gotten everything that i need to get out of out of from you because you are a plethora of information and you have so much value to bring to the marketplace right and i appreciate you being on this platform today i just want to open it up one more time if you have anything that you had on your heart to share today and you were not able to share to just go ahead and share that now and then we're going to close it out Sure, I do want, and I'm thank you so much for that. I do want to mention that uh, I started a foundation, uh, the Otahira Foundation, which is uh, helps families impacted by domestic violence. And um, I started that in 2016 as a 5013C organization that he is here in Arizona. And if anyone is dealing with domestic violence in any shape, way, shape, or form, please visit the website. It is O tahira.org that's o t a h i r a h o r dot o r g go there there are resources on there uh, nationally and there are also local resources right here for arizona and there is also a, uh, a a red flag indicator to indicate if you are going through domestic violence if you have you are have a a touch of it or anything it is on there the red flag indicator and you can take the quiz and know that if you're experiencing these things at home, then you want to get the support that you need so you can come away mm -hmm. from that uh, situation. And I also, like I said, I have a book that has the, the warning signs in there that you need to be aware of. What got led me into an abusive relationship is mm -hmm. number one, is that I did not, I, I, I identify with what I wanted, what it was missing in my life. And mm -hmm. in that position, and did only I only focused on that. I did not focus on the warning signs that were around me. I saw them, but I ignored them because I wanted so much to be in a marriage because I did not have mm -hmm. So in the book, I write about it's over 81 warning signs of domestic violence. So if you are experiencing any one of these warning signs, it is not for you to ignore, it is for you to pay attention because. Where there is one, there is many. Mm -hmm. Can you drop just a few of those um, warning signs? Sure. Quick commitment. Anyone that wants to have a get you in a relationship and say, come on over here. We want to go ahead and move in real quick. And it's been two months. And you don't know that person. That's a quick commitment. And that is something that you should run from. Get a chance to know <laughs> yourself first. Get a chance, mm -hmm. to know, get a chance to know who yourself is. Get a chance to know who that person is. Everybody comes with mm -hmm. a story. Everybody comes with a background. No right, 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 right. So, uh, one is quick commitment. Um, if they're being physical abusive to you, if they're being physical abusive to a uh, to an animal, you know, those are warning signs that you need to, to mm -hmm. watch. If they're calling you uh, out of your name and they're just coming back and say, oh, I'm just playing or, you know, or they're trying to be controlling, controlling, oh, trying to identify what you're wearing and who you're talking to and who's on the phone. Mm -hmm. All of these things and they want to sum it up as, oh, well, I just, I'm caring and I just wanted to know because it's just me and you. Absolutely not. That is not. Right, right. It came to steal, kill, and destroy. Destroy, and that yes. Is one of his tactics, that is, that is deception. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, you have to be aware of, of, of the warning signs. Let me just grab this book here because I want to read a little bit more of them all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to read a little bit more of them all. This is good, guys. This is really, really good. Yeah. Really good information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I already went over accelerated uh, involvement, getting engaged or living within uh, each other within six months. Love at first sight pressures you for a commitment or makes you feel guilty for not dating them. Mm. Okay. Um, controlling behavior, unrealistic expectations depends on you for all of their needs. Now we're talking about grown folks here. We understand <laughs> you're in a relationship and we understand that you, you know, you got responsibilities to one another. But for them to depend on you for all their needs, 
no, no, mm -hmm. no. Uh -uh. Uh, expects you to never make a mistake. You gotta be perfect. You, you can't do this, you can't do that. That's mm -hmm. unrealistic. Uh, this credits your ability to make good decisions. Let me tell you something. Every one of us in this world, God has put himself within us. So mm. we are intelligent. Right. We are intelligent. So we may not know what the next person knows, but we are intelligent beings. So don't let, ever let anybody discredit you for what yes. you Yes, absolutely. Um, isolation. I'm going to move over here because there's a whole, a lot of um, controlling behavior. But isolation cuts you off from your family and your friends. That's your power connection. Mm -hmm. That's your power mm -hmm. connection. Your family, God, worshiping, going outside, being able to, uh, you know, have a life outside of that relationship. If anyone cuts you off and isolates you, that is abuse because mm -hmm. they're going to have control over your life. They don't want you to think for themselves. They don't want anybody else to tell you any information. They're isolating you. Um, demoralizes you, you and speaks against your parents, family, and friends. Wow. And I'm going to go on to, uh, let me see, keeps you locked up. Also, that's another one. Quickly blames blames others at work for their behavior makes you feel responsible for the way you feel by saying such things as you make me upset i can't help being angry it's your fault everything goes wrong in your in the relationship you're hurting me by not doing what i asked you to do mm -hmm. that, was, that was the one i got you're hurting me because you're not doing what i told you to do you do what i i want to wow. do that to nobody you wow. Can, um, destroying objects, punching holes in the wall, or mm. property. That's another warning sign. Throws objects at you or around you, you know, just because they didn't hit you or punch you yet, but they put right. something to just to throw in your presence because of their anger. Wow. That's a warning sign. Yes, I've picked up things before. I've gotten angry before. We all have gotten angry. But mm -hmm. if somebody is getting angry in your presence and they're throwing things around you, that is something to be aware of. Um, physical, emotional, and verbal abuse. Slapping. Choking. Pulling mm. you, spitting at you or on you. Urinating on you. Oh, my God. Yes. Biting. Forcing you to take drugs or alcohol. Threatens you to threatens you with a knife or a gun, slapping or punching you, name calling, telling you that you're ugly or unattractive. Mm. Calling you a B.I. You know, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I don't know. Or stupid or intimidation. Yeah. So I mean, I, I oh one other one's here. I want to get this one. Okay. Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> nice one day. And that same day, you're evil. Wow. Unexpected mood changes. Mm. Or to have split personalities. That's what I dealt with. I wow. would go back and say, I said, God, wait a minute. Was he he was just nice? He was praising and everything. And now what well, wait a minute. What I'm scratching my head. Did he just say that? Did he just do this? So, 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 to hear her, you actually met him in the church. Uh, how, no, how did you? I mean, in, no, we used to go to church, and he used to cut up in the church. I used to go like, <laughs> God, did you, we in your house? Did you just hear him? He, he said, Wow, Doctor Jacqueline, and Mister Hyde. Wow. Oh, this is my wife. Oh, this is my beautiful wife. This is that. Get back in the. Get back home. You stupid. You can't do nothing right. You ain't did this. Yeah, all of that. All of that. All of that. You know, ah. those are warning signs. And there's over 80, 81 in this book. Warning signs. Of warning signs. Don't ignore the warning signs, guys. I don't care how bad you want something. Listen, go to God for what you want. Work for what you want. Position right. yourself right. Get yourself right, you know, for what you want. Attract what you want in your life. Right, right, right. You don't have to settle for what you think you want or what may look good or what somebody else sells you on. Right, you absolutely. 
He saw me mm-hmm. on marriage. Like, he's like, I want him to be married and I want to get this and I want to have that. And guess what? I fell right into it because of that's what I attracted. I wanted to be right. Because right, of right, right. Have and he it? saw that and was able to draw you in. <laughs> yeah. And, he saw mm-hmm. it. Them, them, those, wow. energies, those energies, oh, they, they go at it. You know, those are mm-hmm. the- those are the principalities. Wow. They work. They work. They work. They work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you just, you have yeah. to be careful of what you put out. So that's why I say know God first. And one thing before we close, one thing I want to leave everyone with this. You may not know that person, but God does. Mm-hmm. You may not have a relationship with God. You may not know him. But I'm, in, I'm encouraging you to, to just seek him. Yes. And ask him who that person is and who that, what their role is in your life. Yes, yes. Because God knows who that person is. Yes. He created them. He created mm-hmm. them. So he knows mm-hmm. their heart. He knows their intent. He knows what they've been. Mm-hmm. He knows everything about them of which we don't right. know. We know what we want. We know what we see. We know what we can understand about that mm-hmm. person. You know, the research that we have actually done. But that's right. not enough. That's right. Not enough. We need right. something. Go- we need a mm-hmm. high power to tap in on these relationships. Yes. Right. Excited. Because he will reveal those. Oh, he will. He yes. will reveal those things to you. Yes. yes. He will reveal those things. Those hidden things. Those you know, like things. a lot of those hidden things mm-hmm. will be revealed to you when you ask. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Can you say the name of your book again so that anyone that's listening can actually. Um, oh, it's beautiful. Thanks. Can um, where, <laughs> where can they find your book at? Um, is it on your two places? Amazon.com, okay. and they can go okay. to our website at otahira.org, and also okay. message me um, on um, on IG or Facebook if they don't want to do those. So, so- yes, but that, and it'll be directly shipped to them and autographed. Oh. But in this book, it has so many stories of both, like I said, both men and women of their survival of domestic violence. And also, it has a former abuser story in here as well. He opens up right. about the abuse that he inflicted on somebody else, and now he's changed and is helping others to understand what abuse looked like from an abuser's standpoint. Ooh, that's awesome. Now, that right there is, yeah, that is uh, that is absolutely an amazing because a lot of times that abuser is usually like a narcissist, and n- normally they will not tell their side of the story because they're still feeling like they're right the yes. entire time. Yes. Even without the physical abuse, sometimes there's that verbal abuse, am I correct? Oh, yes. um, that takes place that is more, and that verbal abuse is, is long, m- lot, a lot longer lasting than that physical, even though we still deal with those type of things. Am I correct? You saying, um, you know, like with the the emotional, that's yeah. The emotional, emotional. Exactly. Look, I'm trying to tell a story, (laughs) the emotional. Absolutely. But to Herod, God, this is such good information. And I thank you for being able to share those tips on, because a lot of times, especially in this day and age, um, with social media, I'm just guys. We're gonna end this in a minute, but this get this is good. <laughs> with social media, people are looking at people on social media, and their perception of who that person is mm-hmm. usually does not line up once they're off of social media, especially with that millennial and that that next generation, that Y generation. Mm-hmm. You see a lot of things that are on social media, and when they get with that person, they they don't see they find out later that that person is actually not who they had them thinking that they were. And that abuse, um, you know, can be taking place offline. And then what's showing online um, can be something totally different. So the information that she's just giving you guys are telltale signs for you to even look at when you first meet that person offline, right? Or even online. Meeting them, meeting them in a chat and you start to see those telltale signs. Those are things that you can look for and see, Hey, you know what? I don't want to, I, I don't want to attach myself to this. Yeah. Get out early. Yeah. Is that, is that a true statement? That, get that out is, early. Get out early. And I, I would just be careful. Okay. I know yeah. this is the 
digital world and people meet people online, people slide through people's DMs and they inbox. <laughs> right. I understand that. I get that. But just be careful of who you get right. into your energy because it's yes. a person per se, but it's what the energy that leaps off of that person onto you. So you have to protect, yes. you have to protect your surroundings. You have to protect you. And you don't know what box these people jumping up out of. So just yeah. be careful. Use your wisdom. I always say, seek God first. A lot of people don't know about God. They don't know how to have a relationship. They don't know any of that. Yeah. Just use wisdom. Be careful. Use your instinct because God has put himself in all of us and it's called instinct. So use your <laughs> gut feeling. If you feel something ain't right, go with your gut feeling, please. And, right. And just because, you know, I have heard so many so many people die mm. because they met somebody on Facebook or Instagram and they didn't know who that person was and that person right. was a killer and they're no longer yeah. they're no longer yeah. so God mm. I'm begging you all please be careful of the people that you date be careful of the people that you just interact with in conversation because like I mm -hmm. said energies can leap from that person to you just be careful Right, right. And this type of manipulative uh, behavior can happen in relationships, even outside of, of domestic, domestically, right? With those manipulative, manipulative behaviors, people yeah. trying to even control friendships yeah. and different things like that. Mm -hmm. You also want to take some of these things and be able to integrate them inside of the relationships that you're yeah. aligning yourself with also, because those can also um, carry over into some bad relationships. Exactly. If you have no peace, uh, peace is something that I guard. I guard my peace. Yeah. I guard my peace. Mm -hmm. And as soon as my peace gets disturbed, I pull back. Yes. Right. I love God. I love God's people. I don't want yeah. you guys to misinterpret that. I love God and I love his people. But when I see that, un that unevenness, pull I pull back. back. Right. Because that peace is something that you cannot get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Anything that disturbs your peace, you need to un unalign yourself with that thing. You know, that's my friend. She just joking. Like she said, it's a joke until it's not a joke. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. a joke until it's not a joke. So you have to be very, very careful of who you even align yourself in all of those friendship yeah. Um, associate relationships as well yeah. right this can carry over into that this has been some really really good information but we did have a question about um thank you bobby for getting on bobby i need to get you on here also because he has a very good um story also yeah. um but um i think her name was let me see wife of benny I think that's it. Um, she is. She was asking about the vitamins that we service here at Total Life Changes. What vitamin that she could get from Total Life Changes, and we have something called Nutriburst. Um, we normally don't talk about the products on this platform, but you asked the question, so we got to give it to you. <laughs> so, um, um, it is a liquid vitamin, a liquid multivitamin, and it has 72 minerals, 19 amino acids, 13 whole greens, but it is loaded with things that are able to help your body, help your body get back to optimal balance. And taking just one tablespoon a day, daily, you will be able to feel afresh, feel alive. It's going to make you feel alive from the inside out. Right. You'll be bursting. You'll, you'll have this glow that me and Tahara have. Right. Yes. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you'll be glowing from the inside out. So um, and you if if you are on Tahira's platform, you can actually get back with her, get in her DM, and she will get that vitamin for you. If you're on my platform, just jump on over here to me, and I'll help you get that platform, I mean that vitamin. Um, but thank you. Uh, another question. We got another question. Oh, she said thank you. Oh, okay. Um, and, and we will share it on, on Facebook. Thank you so much. I'm going to download it, and we're going to be okay. able to sh um, share this on our other platforms. Okay. Tahara, I just want to say, um, I'm just going to go ahead and close it out, but I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. I would love to have you on here again. I didn't want to, um, I, I don't want to rush you, but I, but I don't want, I want to be also mindful of your time as well. And so that is, um, 
why I'm just going to, you know, cut it off now, but I would love to have you back up here again. And so that we can like even go deeper into your book yes, and be able to, to help some, yeah, yeah, to go even deeper. So, cause people, um, they want the information, but sometimes they're afraid of asking mm -hmm. for the information or they don't know where to go for the information. Mm -hmm. And guys, she just gave you, I mean, in these last, what, 30, 40 minutes we've been on, she has given you a plethora. She's given you a lot of information, a lot of information. And it would, um, you would be mindful to go to her, her website, otahara.org, um, otaharafoundation.org. Am no, I correct? otahara.org, but it's, uh, the name of it is the Otahara Foundation. Okay. Otahara.org. Go to, go there. And if you have questions about your situation, go and take that red flag questionnaire and be able to find out, am I in a situation that I don't need to be in? Look for the resources that she says are on that website so that you can get help and you can get out of that situation. Also reach out to her and find out, am I, am I okay with saying that? Yeah, absolutely. Reach, in, absolutely. Okay. Reach out to her and find, yeah, Go ahead. and find, and find out how to take those next steps to get you out of the situation that you're in. All right. Um, we don't want you. The last thing we want you to be doing is living in silence. Right. Um, you have support systems out there. She she gave you great advice. She said, "Let somebody know." And that's what we are speaking to today. We want you to get out there and we want you to let somebody know. If it's me, right, I don't have all the answers, but I got a, I got a connection with somebody who does, right, <laughs> that can get you to that next step. So if you are hearing this on my platform, I would love for you to get inside of my, in my DM box and I can get you connected um, with Tahara to be able to get that information um, however you see this and wherever you are today, if you are in need of help, don't be afraid to jump inside of those DMs for a good purpose. And Tahira, you got something you wanted to add? Yeah. Are you able to pin um, the National Domestic Violence web, um, hotline here? I can. Um, I'm, I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Drop National it. Domestic Violence Hotline. And it okay. is. 1-800-787-TY okay. okay. number. I'm sorry. 1-800-799-799-7233. That's 1-800-799-7233. That's the National Domestic Violence Hotline. They are standing by um, our people to talk to you 24 hours, 365 days in. Someone's always there to be able to talk with you. And also on our website, we have um, um, we have individuals, therapists that will are, are that are there to be able to talk to speak with you as well. Awesome. Okay, I pinned that to the top of the comments. Okay. So, guys, just be able, just go ahead and get out there and get some help. We, no one wants you to continue to suffer in silence, right? And to feel like you are deserving of a behavior that you're not. All right. You are a kingdom, kingdom kid, whether you believe or not, you are chosen by the most high and you deserve everything that God has for you. Yeah. All right. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out. Thank you again to Hera for coming on. I appreciate you so much. And like I said, I want to have you on this platform again. Um, but guys, I'm going to close it. Let's yeah, absolutely. I would, I would love to, because this is a very helpful information that I am ready to 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 give <laughs> absolutely as soon as we get off okay. we're gonna do that so um i want to um also guys like i do every tuesday when i close it out i ask you to go out there and reflect on at least two things that you are truly grateful for on today and that's whether you have lights water you're living under a bridge if you're living under that bridge you got coverage right just be thankful for at least two things that you are truly grateful for on today and i promise you your life will get that much better all right you have an absolutely amazing day on purpose toodles thank you tahara you're welcome thank appreciate you, you. thank you thank you <laughs>